Welcome to the Garmin Marine webinar series. Today, what I wanted to cover is traditional sonar. We're going to take a deep dive into the traditional sonar settings, specifically including our GPS map series XS and XSV units is what this will actually cover. As always, if you have any questions pertaining specifically to this webinar, at the bottom there, you're going to see uh, marine.training at garmin.com. Please send your emails to uh, that location, and then we'd be happy to answer any of your questions that we didn't answer on this webinar itself. So let's get into the series here and take a look at the units that we're going to be covering. So overall, we're going to cover the 8600, 7600, pretty much all of the current GPS map series. Uh, XFB units just mean that it has sonar built into it. And what we wanted to focus on today is going to be the traditional sonar uh, setting. So deep diving into it. As always, remember, Garmin's an easy unit to use and straight out of the box, all of the auto settings is really what you want to start with. But this allows you to customize your sonar to maybe be able to see the bottom a little better, target separate those fish a little better. So let's take a look and see how we can do that. What do I mean first off by traditional sonar? This is traditional sonar here. So it's that, it's that color palette that you're kind of used to here. You've got the water column, the bottom here, and then fish in this instance here are shown as arches or chevrons. So we're gonna dive into this and take a look at how we can customize these settings. I wanted to break this into two parts. So this is gonna be part one of this webinar series for sonar traditional deep dive using the GPS map series. Uh, we're gonna cover, you know, make sure your software is update, uh, sonar data overlay, customizing data bars, uh, we're going to dig deep into the sonar main menu and then the sonar setup. Uh, that'll get us about halfway through and then I'll do another webinar covering in part two, appearance, which is color schemes, A-scopes, alarms. We're going to do some advanced features in that one covering shift, bottom search limit, uh, and installation. And what I mean by installation, that's going to be you've already installed your transducer. And what do we need to do to maybe locate that transducer or set that transducer? In most instances, all you have to do is plug the transducer in and you're good to go. So stay tuned also to part two of this series here. So as always, make sure your software is up to date. You can go to our website and under Marine Training, we have Active Captain. Active Captain is going to show you how you can actually do your software updates through the Active Captain app. You can also do software updates by downloading that to an SD or micro SD card. And we have all that information on our website. So you wanna know that recently we've done some uh, additional software updates, which gives you uh, a better pathway to most of our features on there and some more diagnostic pages that you can see on there. We've also added additional transducers so that we're now allowed to look in, take a look and change a particular model of transducer uh, to make sure that the unit is picking that up. You'll see some of this in part two. Picture advanced. So we actually had this feature in some of our series a few years ago when we brought this back. And so when you do your current software update, you're gonna be able to see this setting under the sonar main menu under appearance, picture advanced, and I'll dig deeper into what those picture advances mean there from the 1-1 all the way to the 8-1 in part two. So sonar overlay, first thing that people ask me, and remember, a lot of this information that we're giving you comes from customer requests and dealer requests when we're at shows or we're at dealer trainings. So sonar overlay, first thing, let's take a look at a screenshot, and I use the 86, 12 XSV unit for these screenshots here. So I'm on my homepage, okay? And over here I selected sonar and then we're gonna go into traditional sonar. 
So you select sonar, select traditional sonar, and now we're on our traditional 2D sonar page. Very popular, very common for most people um, to, to know and understand. People always ask me, how do I get rid of this or how do I customize that? Let's take a look and see. So if we go in and we first select menu, you're going to have the sonar main menu pop up. I tell a lot of people, I kind of joke a lot of times, in order to run a Garmin unit, if you can remember the menu button and the home button, you can do anything on a Garmin unit. You literally at that point just read your screen. Okay, so let's go in here to menu and now let's do sonar setup. And under this screen here, we'll want to go into appearance. And remember, if you don't see the sonar overlay data page, you might have to scroll down under appearance here until you see overlay data. So we select overlay data press on that portion of it, and this pops up all the information that we're showing here. So from the top left, we've got depth, water temperature, um, speed, and then uh, battery voltage, and then time of day. So we can simply go in and turn any of those on or off, depending on how we want to customize the screen. Some people don't like the data overlaid on the screen. And so they might want to hide it and then they might want to do something different, like maybe add a data bar either along the top, bottom corners. And we'll talk about how to do that uh, later on in the next few steps. So we hit all the data and now we have a full sonar page here. Okay. So we've got our water column, our bottom. We show fish arches or chevrons. We've got hard structure on the bottom. So, and then remember, sonar screens advance from right to left, okay? So really, all this information that you're seeing here is right off your transom or wherever that transducer is mounted and then back, okay? So how do we edit overlay data bar top and bottom? So this is something a little bit different, and let's go into the data bar. So if we take a look, and how to customize a data bar. Remember what I said before is if you select menu and then you go into your edit overlays, this pops up a screen here. Now, when you get your Garmin unit, most of the Garmin units you're gonna see, the data is actually set to sidebar, okay? As of right now, in this example, I turned everything off to show you how we can customize it. So let's go into data. And then let's go in and see our options. This is just pertaining to our sonar screen. So I can do a sidebar, which is normally what it's defaulted to. I can do a top bar, double side, or turn it off completely if I didn't want that. So in this instance here, let's go ahead and put in the top bar. And then let's go ahead and we're gonna customize that top bar setting, okay? So what I can actually do is if I select back, I want to go ahead and replace that data. Maybe I don't want the GPS speed in there. Maybe I want to go ahead and add different information in there. So on a touchscreen unit, if you press and hold the data box covering that particular data bar, a replace data drop down will appear. Now remember, this information is just pertaining to whatever is on your vessel itself. So if you're not connected to any of our sailing instrumentation, you're not gonna see that data in that data bar box. It'll just be empty. So let's go in here and we're gonna select system because of what I wanna do here is actually change that speed to time of day. So maybe I'm fishing a tournament and I wanna make sure I see that time of day up there and then I can go ahead and make and replace that data. And so you can do this on any one of the data bar boxes to customize that. So simple and easy customization of your data bar. I like the data bar on the top a lot of times, and that's why I did that in this particular example. So time of day is now selected. 
So top bar, this is a little bit different. So if we take a look at this and we come into our, our uh, uh, data page here, we can go in and actually turn on and off the top bar and then we have a couple different choices. So let's take a look here on the top bar. If I select that, I can actually show information from an autopilot. If I have an autopilot on board, media, which would be from the Fusion Stereo is a good example, or a compass tape. So let's go ahead and add a compass tape and then show that on our screen there. So now I have data bar, uh, top bar, all lots of information. This might be getting a little bit cluttered, but we want to kind of show you how to go in and customize that. Let's move on. We're going to go ahead and do the bottom bar. And in this, what we can actually do is let's select media. And I'm going to do this for a reason because a lot of people want to have their fusion stereo, but they don't want to have to exit to the main menu in order to access their fusion stereo. So we select media bar. And then if you notice, take a look on the bottom there. That's our fusion stereo control. So we never have to leave our sonar page. We can still control that information right within sonar. If we press on that box there on the bottom right hand side, we can also maximize this screen. So now we have our full fusion screen to control all our information on there from sources to zone control and audio control. So let's hit back <clears throat> and let's go into the sonar main menu. So from pressing menu, remember that's all you have to do when you're on your sonar page there, select menu. And on the right hand side up here, this is where your sonar main menu is gonna pop up. Let's go in after we hit menu and we're gonna select game. So remember, gain, it controls the level of detail and noise shown on the screen. Auto modes are the best way to start out. So if you're new and you're just starting you know, to fish, you want to go ahead and start on our auto settings. Those are the best baseline to start with. And what I recommend to a lot of people is get into an area where you actually can see or you know what the bottom consists of, meaning you can see the bottom has rocks on it. Drive over it with your boat and then look to see that, hey, that was a huge, this might have been like a, a piece of concrete or a large rock that you're seeing down there. So before you ever go in and change any of your settings, use your auto settings first. But with that, you also have the addition to customize. So auto high. If you notice here, I'm starting to increase the gain and you're going to see a little bit more clutter on here. You know, some of these fish here that are stacked up, um, it's going to get a little bit more cluttered. So you get a little bit more noise on the screen. You get a little bit more information on the screen uh, when you're increasing the gain setting. So if you want to see larger targets. This is the way I really kind of talk about this. I wanted to see these targets here, good sized fish, nice arches here, but I didn't want to see, let's go back one. I didn't want to see all this clutter that I'm seeing, okay? So I come in here and now I turn my game down a little bit and I cleaned up that water column, but I'm missing some of the smaller fish. So if I was looking for bait fish and I did this, I might be missing some of that information. And that's where you have that, you know, auto setting where you can go back into auto, low, medium, or high and uh, quickly get back out of your customized settings. Frequency. So this is talked a lot at shows. People ask about frequencies. Um, you know, should I use chirp? Should I use just traditional sonar, 50, 200 kilohertz? Um, the frequency is dependent upon number one, the unit, either the head unit, XSV model, black box sonar, and the transducer that is connected to it. Okay. So chirp, what does chirp do? So chirp actually allows you to sweep each pulse through a frequency range. 
And when you do that, you get a lot of really, really good information on the screen. While chirping, you can target separate much better. So most people are gonna keep their unit in the chirp setting, and that's gonna work for the majority of people out there. I go to a lot of folks too, and they'll say that, hey, John, your, um, your seminar's not working really well, and I have chirp and it's not working. And I'll take a look at this lower left-hand corner down here, and it might not say chirp. It might say 50 kilohertz, or it might say 200 kilohertz. And it could have been simply that they just took and changed the frequency from what that transducer is doing, or they don't have a chirp transducer. So let's go in and we're gonna select uh, frequency and show all of our possible selections with that particular transducer that's uh, connected to our unit here. So first off, remember the higher the frequency, okay? That uses a narrow beam width and are better for high speed operation and rough seat condition. Uh, it's great for bottom definitions, thermal climbs, um, when you're using that higher frequency. Okay. So when I say higher frequency, you know, getting up into that 200 and plus kilohertz. Lower frequencies. These use, and now, when I say this, this is for, in general, for the most part, lower frequency transducers use a wider beam. So it lets fishermen see those targets much better. So your arches, your chevrons that you're seeing here are going to become more predominant on the screen when you're using a lower frequency transducer because the beam is so wide. Let me go back one screen and just let you know. There's higher frequency transducers that are out there. They're actually both high frequency and high and wide. So this is not just always their narrow beam widths. So kind of take a look and we have some out there too that we do, you know, a high wide uh, beam on there. And that's kind of so we're getting the best of both worlds. Higher the frequency, you know, it works better in shallow water. And then we're also getting those fish arches. So lower frequency, um, remember 50 is kind of that standard in that lower frequency. Uh, years ago, that's all we had. We'd have these dual frequency transducers that were both 50 kilohertz and 200. And that kind of helped us, you know, with both deep and shallow water at that time. So adjusting the frequency of your sonar for your particular goals um, and what you want to do at that certain depth. You can go in and actually manage your frequencies on many of our Garmin units that are out there. Um, and the reason why you might do this is because you're targeting a, a particular species of fish and you want to make sure that that shows the best on the screen. So this is just an example that I'm going to give here, but I can go under manage frequencies. I could go in and select new preset and type in the frequency that I want to target. Now, available frequencies that you see right here are dependent upon the transducer that is connected to your sonar device, okay? So in this example here, we can run anywhere from 25 kilohertz all the way up to 210 kilohertz. So I wanted to put in there 60, so I just use my keypad, I type in 60 kilohertz, and this is just something scientists have been working on. Between 60 and 88 kilohertz, they feel that tuna show up the best on particular sonar devices. So when you get really good at this and you can really target and see what, uh, uh, how to separate fish and species, you know, the, the guys that are out there that have done this for years, they're gonna go ahead and set that as a preset. They can go and select 60 kilohertz and and then target those particular species make sure though that you select 60 kilohertz because if you look at it right here on the bottom left i'm still chirp which is fine but i haven't completed what i'm actually wanting to do here so let's go in we'll select 60 kilohertz and now as you see here lower left hand corner 
I'm on 60 kilohertz. So very important, make sure you're running the proper frequency for the depth that you're fishing in and auto modes are really a good baseline to start out with if you're brand new in fishing. Zoom, so we have some really cool features and we could do you know, an hour on just our Zoom settings, but I wanted to kind of pick a couple different ones here. So same thing, when we're on our sonar menu, we simply come in and we select sonar, main menu, zoom, and magnify. So if we take a look here, we've got sonar main menu, we've selected zoom, we go into mode, and what we wanted to show here is the brand new or pretty new magnify feature that we have out there. So let's select magnify. And then what this actually does is allows you to pop up a box here on the screen and I could magnify anything within that box. And over here, it'll tell me how many times I'm actually magnifying it. On a touch screen, you have the ability to pinch and zoom that box. Uh, you can also have a slider that pops up. What's nice about this is if I didn't want that box because maybe it was disturbing me, I can go ahead and pinch that box away. And then I can come back over to the screen and pinch that box again to open it back up if I wanted to target certain areas on there and see it a little bit more detailed. Okay, I wanted to take a look at this bottom and kind of see, wow, there's a pretty good sized fish there on the bottom. So we've increased the magnification to six times on this. And that's just by either using the slider or just pinching the zoom open further. And then we can go all the way up to six times. So, you know, that fish that's on the bottom that we wanted to kind of target and see, we can look at it a little bit closer. So a great feature that you're gonna see, this is on a lot of our sonars now, you know, in the GPS map series, even on the echo map series, you're gonna find that. Range. So range is pretty simple. When you take a look at this, range is generally set to uh, auto when you get it out of the box, okay? And what that's actually gonna just show you here, it allows the device to adjust automatically to give you the most information on your screen with the bottom showing up on the bottom third of the screen, okay? You can go in and adjust that if you wanted to and manually adjust, adjust the range. And you would do this if you're um, targeting a specific range, um, you're tracking the bottom and you have a lot of big terrain changes on the bottom, you might want to go in and manually adjust that range so you can keep that information on the screen so you don't get this cutoff line here in between cha range changes every single time. You want to keep that third of your screen on there and you know if you set that particular range at a certain depth setting that you're not going to get this line that appears on there and so that's why you would adjust the range settings transmit turning uh transducer on and off this is a huge point of contention here we want to make sure that we emphasize this if you have your boat on a trailer and it's out of the water and you're working on that boat and you've got the unit turned on, that transducer is pinging away. If you do it for a short period of time, that's fine. The transducer is not going to have an issue. But if you're on the boat all day long and you're working on something, make sure that you go in and turn that transducer off so it's not transmitting. You don't want to burn up that transducer. So simply from the main menu, you're going to go ahead and select the menu sonar main menu, and then turn the sonar transmit off. You can also do this when you're on pretty much any screen, the unit is turned on. And if you do just a quick little press of the power button, you're gonna get this menu that pops up and that allows you to disable all sonar on your vessel itself. So a good thing to have, remember you don't want that unit firing away all day long if you're out of the water. 
So let's go into sonar setup. We want to go into the sonar main menu here, sonar setup, and we're going to talk a little bit about scroll speed. When you're running the most current software version here, you're going to see your scroll speed goes from really a one all the way up to a 10. Four is your default scroll speed. And this is how fast the picture actually advances from right to left on the screen, okay? So if you want to see information scrolling faster, you can increase that. From those situations, the default setting is where you're going to actually target. That's going to give you the best information to give you the best targets and the best resolution on there, but you can increase that if you want. The auto setting, um, when you select this, this actually matches your boat scripts, your boat speed. Uh, so the targets in the water are draw, drawn with the correct aspect ratio and they're not as distorted, okay? If you're just turning it all the way up to a number 10, okay? And then when you increase the scroll speed, like I said before, 10 is the fastest. A higher scroll, scroll speed um, shows more detail until there's no additional detail to show. So that means that it's gonna start to stretch these chevrons out. But you wanna increase the scroll speed when you're moving or trolling, um, or also when you're in very deep water, you would wanna increase the scroll speeds. Um, in order to pick up the bottom. But once you do that, those little arches and chevrons start to get stretched out further, you might lose some of your data. Noise rejection. So you feel that you're picking up some sort of RF noise or you're seeing lines drawn on the screen. There's a couple things that we can actually do. And we're gonna talk about interference and we're gonna talk about smoothing. These work in conjunction with each other really well. Remember this. Start, if you see some noise, you might see a line drawn on the screen, okay? Start with interference and go low, and then go to maybe smoothing and do the same thing and start with low. You don't want to just increase your interference rejection, noise rejection, all the way up to high to start out. So the way that we do this is we go into interference. This will adjust the sensitivity, okay, to reduce any noise um, from surrounding sources. Um, start at the low and kind of work your way up with this. That low, medium, and high, and the default setting is off. So for most people with the proper installation, uh, you're not gonna actually have to even dig deep into this at all. So if you've got your transducer cables running properly, you don't have any engine noise or anything, uh, you're gonna be good with that. So transducers should be run separately, not bundled together with any other wiring or run close to the engine, okay? It's kind of a joke. What's the What's the hardest place to install electronics? It's on a boat because it's hard to follow all these rules, you know, because generally you've got one chase tube. But if there's any way that you can separate that transducer cable and keep it away from other power cable sources, um, you're going to lessen the uh, possibility of noise on the screen itself. Um, snap on ferret, they reduce RF noise. Uh, you're going to see those in a lot of our units, our transducers that we ship actually come with a lot of these that are included, or there's third-party manufacturers out there that you can actually um, snap onto the outside housing of the cable, and hopefully that'll help decrease interference on your sonar. Color limit. So what this actually does is hides part of the color palette. So if you have weak returns, you might want to hide those because that's information that, you know, might be something that you don't really care about, you don't really need to see, so you're going to hide that particular information. 
So we can go into color limit, turn that on, and then start to, if you notice here, I turn it up. Let's go back. And I turned it up one. You're going to start to see it starts to clean up the screen here. Okay. But it might have removed, if I'm fishing a thermal fine, I might have removed that. But here, let's say I'm just bottom fishing. So I'm really more, I'm looking at targets that are on the bottom. I'm looking at these targets that are on the structure here. So if I increase that color limit, maybe just one step, that might help me out a little bit. Find that sweet spot though. You can turn this all the way up and you're gonna then not really see the screen very well. I've got to a lot of boats and I'll take a look at their screen and their solar will look like this. And I'll actually go in and just reset the settings. And in part two, we're gonna show you how to go back to your default settings within the Garmin unit. So make sure you find that sweet spot so you're getting the best information on the screen itself. Smooth it. So I talked about this earlier. In conjunction with interference, you can also use smoothing. So this removes noise, okay, which is not a part of that normal sonar return. And it kind of can adjust that information on the screen itself. Same thing here. Um, do it incrementally. So you're only removing, don't, don't go all the way up to high on your interference, and high on your smoothing and think that's gonna actually help out right away. Make sure that you're seeing those incremental changes and taking out that noise. So when you set this smoothing to high, more of the low level noise remains um, than when using interference control. So you're going to have to kind of play around with both settings with uh, you know, the interference control, the smoothing and see what is the best for you. And simply it might be you need to reroute your transducer cable first because these small incremental fixes here might not fix a larger problem on the vessel itself. Surface noise. And I get this a lot. This is a lot of people will talk about this surface noise. We'll see this up here. And in this example here, I'm in, you know. 300 and some feet. So it might not be, um, you know, it, it might not hinder my fishing as much, but you get into shallow water. Let's just say I'm fishing in 20 foot of water and this surface noise that's ringing down from the top here is interrupting what I'm seeing on the screen itself. We can go ahead and turn that off. And that's simply coming over to surface noise. It's showing now, I turn it off. Remember, wider beam lengths, the lower frequency transducers can show more targets, but they can generate a lot of surface noise. So if this is the back, just turn it off, and then that way you're kind of cleaning up that surface uh, of the top portion of your sonar screen. TVG, time varying gain. I get a ton of questions on this. And it's actually pretty simple when you really think about what we're talking about. It actually kind of tells you that it's, it's varying the time that that gain setting uh, is showing certain targets. So let me, let me show you what I mean by that. So we can go in and TVG is set to off when we first get the unit out of the box here. But at certain depths, I can go on and turn on TVG because maybe I want to see, I'm in, you know, deeper water here. I'm in 300 and some foot of water and I want to clean up some of the noise. Remember how we first cleaned up our gain settings when we first were showing our frequency gains? We can do this on the screen here by going into TVG and then starting off. And this is just an example. This is not cut and dry. You've got to do some trial and error on your boat to see what time varying gain setting is optimal for your fishing. So, and this is just an example here. If you're fishing in 300 feet, your TVG may be set to medium in your area. 
but it can be completely different depending on water clarity, salinity, bottom composition, um, and then most important, the species that you're targeting. So generally speaking, you're going to have TVG off, but you can adjust it. And these are just kind of examples, but they're not hard and set rules. You know, in 50 to 100 feet, try lower or medium. And then you can see, you know, in 200 feet plus, turn your TVG up to high and see if that helps to target separate some of these targets here and clean up that picture a little bit easier for you to see. So I wanted to thank everyone here for taking a look. We didn't want to go too long with this because this could be, you know, a, a couple hour training session here. So this is end of part one. We wanted to make this simple and easy for you guys to see. We're also going to put this on our uh, YouTube channel so that you'll be able to go back and play this back. Um, I, I made good little slides here that actually have breakpoints. So if you needed to get to a certain portion and you just want to see smoothing, you'll be able to go back on that on our YouTube channel. So if you have any questions pertaining strictly to this webinar, please email us at marine.training at garmin.com. And we'd be happy to go ahead and answer those questions for you. Uh, I thank you very much and appreciate you guys watching this and have a great day. Get out on the water.